in any family history of depression or anxiety? Yes, both. And substance abuse, alcohol or drugs? Yes, uh, alcohol. And have those, the depression, anxiety, or substance abuse been so severe that somebody ended up in the hospital for them? Yes. And how much are you drinking now? Oh boy, maybe once a week, tops twice. Mm -hmm. um, and the tops is, is two glasses of wine. And you mentioned that that then will disrupt your sleep. Yes, and that's why I, yeah. I don't engage in any more. Mm -hmm. Because I'm real cognizant that it's going to mess my sleep up and I got things to do the next day and, and how much coffee are you drinking? Oh I usually go up to three or four cups, sometimes five. In a day. And when do you usually have your last cup of coffee? Well it used to be later until I learned the sleep hygiene and stuff. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. My last cup would probably there are days when I got I just need that two o'clock cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. But two o'clock would be the last and I try to keep it before two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you had been exercising quite a bit before the car accident. Are you back exercising now? Right now there's no time. So exercise is not prioritized in there. And I, mm -hmm. it should be. And are you doing any kind of regular relaxation practice? Uh, not too much. No. I go, remember I told you I go on and off. Mm -hmm. I'll go bouts of it for mm -hmm. a few weeks and then something else will lead my attention and then that gives way. So one of the things that, that we, one of the ways that we conceptualize insomnia is to talk about predisposing characteristics and then precipitating characteristics and perpetuating characteristics, okay? So predisposing, you've got this family history of anxiety, depression, substance abuse, insomnia. You're pretty anxious. All of those are kind of, you know, characterological, um, long-term things that make you more susceptible to um, insomnia. And then the physical abuse and that early fright, fear, also tend to kind of make you more susceptible um, than somebody who didn't have those. Um, precipitating, um, you know, I mentioned to you earlier that the, the, that whole process of stopping exercise is a real common kind of thing. It's hard to hear exactly, other than that, what the accident, you know, how the accident precipitated very much. I don't think it, it really did. You had a hit injury, you know, you kind of shook things up a little bit, but, but recovered pretty quickly. Um, uh, you, you know, there may have been a little bit of vulnerability, and you, you, you kind of tend to be particularly susceptible to vulnerability, um, you know, the, whether it's from the physical abuse or the, the falling in the pool, um, you know, whatever caused it, you tend to be kind of susceptible to that. And, and so that's when it precipitated, and then you've added a bunch of stressors on um, that tend to keep precipitating it or continue to per perpetuate it. The, the things that you're doing right now that are really um, continuing it on, you know, the, the nap three times a week just really confuses your sleep clock. It just, you know, are, are we going to get it, are we not, is it 15 minutes, is it an hour? So then you never go to bed with the same amount of sleep debt. So that will be one thing that will really target. Now. If you and your son want to take a nap together, or if you want to lay down with him for 15 minutes, do it every day. You know, you know, I think we're better off to not do it, but if you're going to do it, do it every day instead of, um, instead of periodically. Then the other thing that's really um, per, you know, perpetuating the insomnia, when you get up in the middle of the night, when you wake up and can't fall back asleep, if you go and get onto the computer, you're in a lot of ways reinforcing yourself for being up, and you're also exposing yourself to light, which is the primary thing that sets your circadian clock. Oh. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to work on some things that you can do. If you wake up, what can you do in the dark 
and the, the most common thing that I, I talk about is listening to a book on tape um, or something so that you can just you can just click that on. Um, it's probably better for you to get out of bed. We want to not have that association between the bed and being awake. So we're, we'd, we'd like to see you get out of bed rather than be do that in bed. So get up, but try to avoid as much light as possible. Um, and then I think those are the ones. The TV in bed. Um, the challenge with that is that it then sets up this thing where you wake up, turn it off, turn off the light, and now the pressure's on, you get this performance anxiety. Can I fall asleep right now or not? And so um, I think, you know, if you can't move it out of the bedroom, what I would encourage you to do is, um, instead of getting in bed and watching TV, um, to watch TV on top of the covers, on um, not, you know, and then, so turn off the TV, get ready for bed, relax a little bit, turn off the light. Um, if you can't fall asleep, then get out of bed pretty quickly. Um, and when I get out of bed at that point, do you recommend the book on tape versus... Well, at night it's less, it's less impactful than that. 3 a.m. What you're doing at 3 a.m. is set telling your circadian clock, oh, this is morning. Okay. So then you're more likely to wake up the next morning at the same time, yeah. which is mm -hmm. kind of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're waking up at, at that 3 a.m. time. <coughs> and so that then sets up a, an arousal right about 3. Okay. It'll wake you up. Um, and I think the other thing that I would really work on would be relaxation training. That will be our first big component. Is something just to, to, to augment that, the stuff that you've been doing. Maybe work on visualization, maybe work on progressive muscle relaxation or breathing. Um, and so that would be the central step in that. You're doing some of it and you're managing a very stressful job and life. And we just want to get you a little bit more skilled at it. So give you something to do in your head when you can't fall asleep instead of the, the thinking, anticipatory anxiety.